Hey everybody and welcome to this tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hedeman, a senior sales engineer with Trimble. Um, and today it's just a quick one about customizing your view settings and specifically a, a certain type of view setting. Now hopefully everybody knows that there are options for creating default views or quick views of different objects in Tecla, whether it be a part, an assembly, or a component. And when I say default views, I mean doing something like selecting a component cone, right clicking on it, and then going to create view and default views of component. And like I said, you can do this for parts and assemblies and components. And what this does, especially if you're in a windowed view like I have right now, is that's going to open up four independent views um, of the front, the end, the top, and then a 3D or a perspective view of that situation, okay? So different views like this will appear in different ways. So it looks like the default setting in my setup, which is the US Imperial environment, for your component views is giving me transparency for both my main parts and my components. Where if I do something like an assembly default view, so let's go to, uh, oops, sorry, go to create view and we'll do just a front. So my assembly front view is apparently showing things in a wireframe, okay? So that's what I'm talking about is you can customize that result, that output. So how do we do this? Um, well, you may be surprised to find that these views all have a saved view property associated with them. And it's the same view properties that we see up here for things like 3D view and elevation view and plan view. You just can't see it because it's being hidden by the options of Tecla structure so that you don't get this long list of views that you may not use or need. So what can we do? So first you want to set up the view for the result that you want. So let's say I want this view or, or any of these views to actually give me the um, sort of gray appearance, uh, but with a solid rendered connection. So I'm doing control three, shift four, right, in this view. And I can do the same thing for this. I could say control three, shift four, okay? So I'm setting up that I want my parts to be sort of gray unless I hover over it. Uh, and then I want the rendered solid for my component. So what I can do now is I can double click in the background of this and we can save this view using the appropriate name. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to save this as component, whoop, if I can spell correctly, component underscore front underscore view. And we're going to save that setting. Now uh, I'm going to go to this view and I'm going to save this as component underscore end underscore view and I'm going to save as. Now you notice they're still not showing up here even though I'm saving them. But if I go and close those views and let's go, you know, reopen another component view. Let's grab this one over here. I can right click, go to my create view and default views of component and we can see that those two views now are showing me that grayish appearance for my main parts and rendered solid for my secondary parts. So it's pretty easy to do. The trick is that you just need to know what to save that view as. So here's what you need to do to find that. If you go into your system folders, so here I am in, let me back up real quick. So I am in my 2024 environments common folder. So this is common, meaning it doesn't matter what environment I'm in, all environments are going to be uh, affected by this. If you search for asterisk.mvi, that's the name of the, um, the file or the file extension that controls your views. So you can see that there's one called assembly bottom view, assembly front view, assembly perspective view. If I scroll down here, we can see component end view, component front view. So that's the name you want. Just take the view that you want to customize, make sure you save it with the same name, and then that becomes the new default view when you go and create that. Now, that's only going to affect this project. From, from a standpoint of how Tecla Structures works, 
you know, it's still just going into the model folder, into the attributes folder. There's the two view uh, settings that I just made. But if you take those and put them in a firm folder or a model template or something like that, you can customize all of your temporary quick views to whatever style you want, right? Have If you want them to be shown rendered or not rendered or wireframe or whatever, you can set that up and then save each of them. And that's just another way to customize Tekla a little bit more towards how you like to work. So I'm gonna give you a little bonus tip here. You notice that every time I do default views, they always show up as the same size. And remember, that's because my main view is windowed. If my main view is maximized, all those views come out maximized. Hopefully you guys know this. But the size and the location of these is actually something that's controlled through your advanced options. If you go into your advanced options and you come down here to model views, you can see right here, XS basic view height, basic view width, position X and position Y. So that's actually setting up the default basic view sizes when you create those. Now, for me, I'm running a 1080p monitor, so I think that that 375 is a pretty good size. But a lot of folks out there have giant monitors, and not just giant monitors, but giant 4K monitors, or some other um, resolution that they're using. So you can actually customize those uh, advanced options and change the size of these views when they do get created. So just a little bonus tip, not really part of what I wanted to show you, but I thought it'd be also interesting to know and add to this. As always, I hope you find these videos helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions or any thoughts or something you want to know more about Tecla. Go ahead and leave that down in the comment below, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.